Good morning, everyone. Uh, hope everyone's had a wonderful, wonderful uh, Christmas, a Merry Christmas. I hope everyone's had a wonderful New Year. Uh, appreciate Mitchell last week filling in for me. I, of course, with the weather being bad, I had to work and certainly appreciate him. Certainly enjoy getting to hear him again, hear his message. I'm sure those of you that listened uh, I certainly did too. But uh, thankful once again for another opportunity to come and stand before you. I still yet, as I said throughout all this, uh, certainly, certainly do miss each and every one. Just uh, seems like as the days go on, just. Uh, I really, really miss my church family and getting to be at church. And I was thinking about it this week, and I hope and trust, I'll say this just for myself, that I don't, uh, the Lord makes me mindful. We get past this uh, time that we're in, and we get to where we can come back to the Lord's house, and I, I feel like with all my heart we'll be able to do that someday. But when we get to that point where we can come back and gather as we're used to and accustomed to. And I hope that for myself that I don't uh, take that lightly like that we have in time gone by, that we cherish that and we hold to that. have some prayer requests tonight. I don't want to get into listing and trying to call off everyone's name. I'm afraid I'll miss somebody, but we've still, we've got some members again in the church that uh, have tested positive for the virus. I encourage you to remember those folks and their families. We've got some that are quarantined. Let's let's remember them. We've also we've got some some sick in the church. And uh, Sister Vivian, she called this evening. I, I weren't in the house when she called. And, uh, been been busy in that today, but uh, uh, she has a brother uh, that lived in Texas and passed away. I just ask that you remember Vivian and her family, remember her brother's family uh, that's there in, in Texas. His, his family certainly do remember them in your prayers the next few days as they uh, go through the process of uh, having service and whatever that they may have down there. But just remember that family in your prayers tonight. And uh, I desire an interest in your prayers. I know that uh, may sound odd me asking that, uh, this being recorded. Uh, uh, but I ain't it out in my mind. I can feel throughout the week uh, uh, that there was uh, there's some that is praying and that for the old church. And I, I encourage each and every one of us. I preached a message to you a few weeks ago that we recorded. And I uh, thought in the, in the text and the message went out. And then the need for prayer. Uh, uh, the need that Christ seen himself uh, uh, to go and seek him out a place of solitude. And I, uh, call out to God and to pray to Him for strength and encourage. And uh, uh, I just I encourage you still yet today. I, I've thought about that this week and uh, uh, today. The need that there is uh, uh, for prayer and God's people. And I, uh, as I was saying there, I know that we're not gathered here uh, uh, together like that we typically are. Uh, uh, and accustomed to still, uh, uh, but I thought this week about how, uh, uh, what a wonderful opportunity that this has been for God's people. Uh, if we'll just take advantage of that, uh, uh, of the opportunity uh, uh, that's presented in to us, it may not be uh, uh, what we think's the greatest or grandest thing today, uh, uh, but we've been presented as God's people an opportunity uh, uh, to really, I feel like, to reach out uh, uh, and to the the lost and dying world uh, uh, and be a light to those folks today and I hope and trust that you are and, uh, uh, if not I encourage you to seek you out uh, just as Christ instructed and uh, uh, led by example himself uh, uh, seek you out an altar of prayer some more than other uh, uh, that you 
you'll get yourself in a shape and a condition uh, uh, where that we can be a help in that uh, uh, to our people that we come in contact with out here in the world, uh, uh, whether it be family, friends, uh, uh, co-workers, whoever that it might be that we come in contact with, uh, uh, but that we can be a light to those folks today. Uh, if you want to read along with us this morning, I encourage you as you're sitting in your homes, uh, uh, wherever that you might be, I encourage you uh, uh, to get your Bible out. Uh, uh, and I'll be reading some scripture to you out of the uh, second book of Peter in the first chapter. And I'll give you just a few moments to be uh, finding that. But in Second Peter in chapter 1, uh, uh, and I encourage you, like I said, if you're at home this, uh, uh, watching this message that's been recorded today, uh, I encourage you to go and get your Bible. If you don't already have it with you, uh, uh, you can hit the pause button for just a second uh, and go and get it. But we'll uh, uh, follow along as we read God's Word in that today. But over in 2 Peter, the first chapter, and I may read several verses here of this chapter, uh, come across it, I guess, last night or the night before last one, read over it, and I look at a lot of different things, like a lot of you folks do, but a uh, little thing that I come across online. It was uh, talking about New Year's and uh, not, not telling you that I'm going to necessarily teach, uh, preach you a traditional New Year's message or anything like that. But, uh, but <coughs> come across this scripture, get to, to where we come across it. And uh, uh, we turned and we read it there the other night and it just it stuck with us. And uh, as we went throughout the day today, uh, it just really stayed with us. So all I know to do... Uh, just like at any other time, is to follow uh, uh, the will of God in that today. So I encourage you to, uh, to read along with us. But in 2 Peter in the first chapter, we'll start reading in the first verse. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Or for the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. For so an entrance shall, you, shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm going to leave off reading right there if correctly read. we we'll reading down through the 11th verse. And I'll uh, uh, try not to be before you any longer than the Lord would have us to do today. Uh, uh, but I encourage you to be very, very much in prayer for this message. Uh, uh, that someone that uh, I still am a firm believer in that today, uh, uh, that God's Word, that it goes out, uh, uh, and there's a reason and a purpose behind it. You uh, uh, that are members here at MCM, you've heard me say that many different times. Maybe you're watching and 
uh, don't attend here regularly with us or uh, uh, maybe don't know me in that today, uh, uh, but I encourage you uh, uh, to listen and add to what the gospel has to say. Nothing that I would say or do, uh, uh, but that to Lord, uh, uh, what that he might have to say. And so you pray, church, uh, uh, that this message, whoever that it might be for today, uh, uh, that it would give them strength in that. Uh, uh, you pray that it might touch their hearts and their souls in that today. Uh, uh, but I want to get into this, the scripture that we've read. Uh, uh, Peter here, uh, uh, he reminds us, I believe it's there, uh, 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 yes, in the fourth verse, uh, uh, Peter's reminding us uh, uh, of some promises uh, uh, that were made uh, uh, down there. Uh, uh, he says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great uh, and precious promises. Now, I, I begin to think about that. You pray for this to me. I, I mean, I begin to think about uh, uh, the promises in that uh, uh, that the Lord uh, has given to His people that today. Uh, if you begin, uh, uh, you can begin over over in the book of Genesis uh, and begin to read God's word uh, and all the way into Revelation. Uh, uh, it is full uh, from cover to cover today uh, of the promises uh, uh, that God has made that to his people. Uh, uh, that's what Peter here uh, uh, simply is doing. Uh, is reminding them uh, of the promises uh, uh, that God's made today. Uh, uh, the promises uh, uh, that Jesus Christ uh, uh, that he made there uh, uh, to the disciples Disciples, huh? And as he preached and as he taught, and he went along huh? uh, during his life and that today. Huh? Uh, but the promises, I want you to think this morning huh? as you're sitting in your home or wherever that you might be. Huh? I want you to think about uh, uh, the things uh, uh, that the Lord uh, has promised to that to you. Uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, you've asked Him for something today. Uh, I don't know your heart or where you're at today, uh, uh, but there's been times in my life uh, uh, that I've asked the Lord uh, uh, for specific things to happen, uh, uh, for specific things uh, uh, to take place in that today. Uh, and the Lord uh, has granted those requests. Uh, uh, those are promises that he made to me today. Uh, he made to us uh, uh, when we were uh, saved in that uh, uh, from a lost and dying condition that we was in. Uh, uh, when he saved our soul today, uh, uh, you read and study the scripture out today. Uh, uh, God, uh, uh, Christ promised his people there uh, uh, that if they would humble their hearts down uh, and cry out to him, uh, uh, that he would fulfill their needs uh, uh, and that he would take care of their wants in that today. But I want to get into what Peter's talking about. That by these you may be, you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And this world we all know is a wicked and evil place. You may say, well, preacher, it's getting wickeder by the day, and I'm not going to say necessarily that it's not, but I want you to understand something today. Uh, there's been wicked people in this world, uh, and I've preached it often. Uh, you can go back into the book of Genesis uh, and find where that God uh, dealt with wicked people there. Uh, they was wicked, uh, bad uh, people uh, in the world then. Uh, that's the reason uh, that he instructed. You go back to Noah. Uh, that's the reason that he came to Noah, uh, instructed him uh, to build an ark uh, for him and his family. Uh, to take all the living creatures that they took with them uh, on that ark uh, uh, during that time. Uh, uh, God destroyed uh, uh, this world, uh, uh, this earth that we live upon uh, uh, with water, uh, all those other <coughs> all those other people uh, uh, that were living during that time, uh, uh, they were destroyed. Uh, uh, their lives was lost, uh, and it was simply because uh, uh, that they uh, uh, were living their lives. that wasn't upon that ark during that time. 
It was because corruption had set up in their heart. God made Noah promise when him and his family came upon off that ark. The first thing that they done was build an altar and thank God. They seek God out. You see how this is Lord's helping me to tie this together. They went to God in prayer. Noah went to God in prayer and thanked him for saving not only himself, but his family. Go on down into this scripture and we'll continue to press right along. Besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. Over here in the footnotes of my Bible, over here beside these, all those words and those things that Peter's instructing the people to do. Peter's not telling them anything that God's not told them, that Jesus Christ has not told them. He's just reminding them of things. I'm not telling you anything new today. I'm not preaching you anything new in that today. Uh, I'm just here to remind us uh, of some things that God has promised, us, promised that he would do for us. But to sum those verses up, those footnotes over here, they give meaning for those words. And they've got a lot of, a lot of, a lot of good ideals out of those footnotes there. But to sum those verses up right there, when I was reading this the other night, I just thought, all that God really wants us to do today is to love our fellow brother and man. And when I say brother, our fellow brother, our fellow sister, naturally speaking, I've got two sisters. One of them's here tonight, and I appreciate her. She's the one that's been recording these messages. And, and without her, this, this wouldn't be possible. She's been taking those home, downloading those, and taking care of all that stuff. Something I'm just not able to do tonight. But naturally speaking, let me get back to that. Naturally speaking, I have two sisters, and I love them, and they love me. Now, we're brothers and sisters. We cut up, and we aggravate each other, pick at each other, and we fussed, and we fought over the years, and, uh, and all those things that come natural with being brothers and sisters and that today. Uh, uh, but at the end of the day, I love them. But what God's instructing us to do, and what Peter's reminding us of here in the scriptures today, uh, uh, it goes further uh, uh, than just loving our natural brother and sister today. Uh, it goes beyond uh, uh, just loving our immediate family today. Uh, the Bible teaches me uh, uh, that I'm to hate no one today, uh, uh, but that I'm to love each and every living being. You say, well, preacher, there are just some people who just can't love. The Bible doesn't teach me to love their ways. The Bible doesn't tell me to love what they necessarily do if they're out into the world and they're out causing trouble and they're out living contrary to what God says to do. But what God tells me to do is to love that soul today and to have compassion for them. And to lift those folks up in prayer today. To pray for them. As we start into this new year. People talk about how horrible that 2020 was. And 2020 it, it, had, it had its fair share of problems. But I was sitting the other evening. A few, few days back. And I began to think about all of my blessings in 2020. And I right here today, as, as you're listening to this message, I want you to know, God blessed me in 2020. Now, I, I, I've, I've done already said, I, I miss just so badly getting to be at church with my church people and getting to fellowship with my church family, getting to worship with my church family, getting to see each and every one 
I miss that dearly. But God's blessed me. God's took care of me, took care of my family. He's seen us through another year. I've been able to see souls saved. I've been able to be uh, go to the river once again and be part of a baptism service again. I, I've seen prayer requests answered. That I, I've seen people I, I call out upon this very altar for many, many years. 2020, I have seen those things come to pass. And that's a reminder to me today, church, that God's still in control. God's still in charge today. God's still blessing His people today if we'll just look for those blessings. I've seen a, seen a little thing the other day, a little, little picture, and it was, had a little saying with it, and many of you may have seen it, uh, uh, but it was a jar. And he said in 2021, each week, to write down one blessing, one thing that God had done for you, and to place it in that jar, and next New Year's Day, 2022, to open that jar up and read about all the wonderful things and be reminded about all the wonderful things that God had done for you, is going to do for you in 2021. I've still got lost souls on my heart. I've got people that right here are part of this congregation. Young children coming to the age of accountability. Some may already be under conviction in that today. Nothing would please my heart more is to see those saved in 2021. And those things can come to pass today, church, if we'll join together in prayer. And we'll call out to one another. And we'll cry out to one another. We lift up each other in prayer today. I want to move on down into this, and I'm going to come to a close here just as soon as the good Lord will let me. <clears throat> but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Now I want to, I want to take just a moment right here. Peter's not talking to the lost right here at this very instant. Peter's talking to somebody like me. Peter's talking to somebody like you this morning. Peter's talking to somebody that's done already accepted <coughs> Christ as their Savior. And like we do so many times along the way, it's straight out. I've strayed off before down through this walks of life. I'm not making excuses for it. I'm not saying that it's all right by any means, but I'm just simply being honest with you this morning. But he that lacketh these things is blind. Are you blind this morning? Have you strayed off? Now this... <clears throat> this is something that really, really concerns me about not being able to be at church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. If we're not very, very careful as Christians, we'll get relaxed in this. We'll say, well, they've posted a few Sunday school lessons, and they've posted the old pastor down there's message, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch this television program this morning. I'm gonna sleep in this morning. I can catch it later. I've got all week to get caught up on that. And if we're not the carefulest thing in the world today, next week we'll be right at our door. You see where I'm going with this? If we're not very, very careful, we'll get really, really latched in that today. So I encourage you, I encourage you, but he that lacketh these things is blind. If you've been blinded in that, if you've got latched in praying, reading, 
howling and checking on your pew, buddy. If you've got latch to those things, huh? Seek you out an opera some more. I want to challenge you to something today. I, I really, I don't, I don't do this anything like this very often at all, whatsoever. In preaching, but I want to challenge you today, church, to do something. No, I'm not asking you to call every member in the church. But if you're watching this message, you think back to when you was at church, and you think of somebody that sits on the pew with you, or somebody that sits in front of you, or somebody that sits in behind you, <coughs> some or another, through this week, if you're watching this on Sunday morning, you've got the rest of the rest of the day to do this. Uh, but you've also got the rest of the entire week. Some or another through this week, I encourage you, pick up the phone and call one of your church neighbors. When I say church neighbors, somebody that sits right beside of you, sits right in front of or right behind you, pick up the phone and call them and say, I miss you terribly. I love you. You pray for me and I pray for you. But sooner than later that we can get back down to that little old country church and we can gather out together. Pick up your phone and call and reach out to somebody. It'll be a strength to you and it'll be a strength to them if you'll do that. Reach out to them today. <clears throat> the ninth verse, But he that liketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. You see, when the Lord cleans us up, He cleans us up of these old sins, these old ways that we have. And I have to come back on a routinely, regular basis and, and ask the Lord to, to forgive me of, of, of my ways and my sins and my failures and my shortcomings and that today. Uh, it has to be a, a routine thing that we do today. Uh, uh, but He's telling them here, huh, if you don't have this all these things that were listed up here in these verses. Uh, if you don't have the love <coughs> for your fellow brother or sister, if you don't have the love uh, uh, for your neighbor, for your uh, classmate, for your co-worker, uh, uh, for the person that don't look <coughs> too pleasing to you, uh, the next time that you have to run out and get some groceries, uh, if you don't have love in your heart for those things, you're blind. Can't see far off, afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Or for the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Now, I, I, I've preached this so many times, and I, I feel wholehearted in this. Once saved, always saved. I believe when Jesus Christ saves us and He does it right th that time, that one and only time, don't have to go back and do it again. But I believe that a lot of times down through life, us as Christians, that we stray off and, and that we leave that. Uh, or for the brother, or for the rather, brother, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. I believe that once that you're saved in that today, the Bible plainly teaches us that we're saved and that we're saved into a good work. And what that means is today uh, is that once we're saved, uh, uh, we're giving a, a job to do today. Hey, some of you here in the church that do several different jobs, and I thank you for that. And I appreciate all that you do. I appreciate, I, I've not got to necessarily, but while the Lord's made me mindful of it, the little video that uh, our kids, our youth here in the church made, and y'all of you ladies that worked so hard on that, Lord, that was such a blessing to me. And I thank you for doing that, for your time and for your effort for that. Um, but that's, that's what I'm talking about. 
That's what Peter's talking about. Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. You've been called. You've been saved into a good work. You've been called to work. You've been given a job. Give diligence to it. What Peter's telling them to do, you've been saved today. You've got a job. You've got something to do in the church. You've got some responsibilities as a Christian. So give diligence to it. Put forth some time and effort and do those things today. I like the last part of this verse. It says, for if you do these things, you should never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly unto the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I really believe here in this chapter that Peter, like so many times in this letter that he wrote, in this message, if you'll have it that way today, that he sent out during this time, that it was, he was trying to uplift the church. He's trying to remind them of what God had done for them, of what God was going to do for them. He was trying to remind them of where they came from, where they'd been, <clears throat> and that God loved them, and God wanted to bless them. You've heard me say so many times, there's a lot of things naturally out here in this world that I enjoy doing. But whenever that I get myself cleaned up and I get myself in the shape that I ought to be in with the Lord, I get everything clicking, there's nothing that I'd rather do than preach God's gospel today. There's nothing that, that, that brings me any more peace, any more pleasure than preaching the gospel. I get nervous, I get tore up, I worry, and all those things. But when I finally get in that stand, I finally get all those things out of my mind and away from me, there's no better blessing, there's no better thing than doing the calling that God has given you today. Enjoying the gifts that God has given you today. I love you out of the bottom of my heart. And I challenge you as we start into this new year. I challenge you to draw closer not to God. To be reminded of those gifts that you have. Those callings that you have. To be reminded of those things and to exercise them. Uh, encourage you still yet to be very, very much in prayer for the lost. As I make request, as I started my message, and I'm about to come to a close right here. But remember those that are sick in our church, those that have this virus. The, let's remember those in our community that have, have lost family and loved ones from this virus that is going around right now. Let's be much in prayer for those folks. I still yet, I want to encourage you today, church. Don't take this lightly. This is real. This is something that's real. And it affects so many, uh, it affects people in so many different ways today. And I, I'm not telling you anything that the news is not, but I want to encourage you today. Uh, first off, as being a Christian, God instructs us to set an example on that today. So let's be mindful to be considerate of our neighbors and our folks that we come in contact as we go about our day-to-day -day lives. I know we've all, we've got, to, we've got to go to work, we've got to do these things, we've got to provide for our families and everything, but let's be considerate of others during this. <coughs> let's let our light shine today. Uh, take this thing seriously. It's real today. I love you out of the bottom of my heart. Remember these requests. If you ain't got nothing else this week to pray for, you can pray for your old pastor. I always, I always stand in need of God's prayers. 
If you would, let's bow our heads. I want to dismiss and close with a <coughs> word of prayer. Dear Lord, most kind and gracious and heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, once again for another opportunity to come and, and to preach your word today, Lord. And Lord, I pray tonight, Lord, that, that you would be with each and every member of this congregation today, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you be with them in their homes, Lord. And Lord, that you be with them as they go to the workplace and <coughs> wherever that they might be. Lord, I pray that you be with them. Lord, I pray, Lord, that they could feel your love. They could feel your mercy about them. Lord, I pray and ask, Lord, that you keep them safe. Watch over us. Protect us, Lord. Lord, those that are sick and afflicted right now, Lord, Lord, I pray that you give them strength and comfort today. Lord, most of all, though, today, Lord, Lord, I pray for those that don't know you in the free pardon of sin. Lord, I pray for those that are lost and undone. Lord, I pray that somewhere throughout this year of 2021, and Lord, I want to thank you for giving us another year. Lord, but I pray that somewhere throughout this year that those that have come under conviction or that will come under conviction, Lord, that you stir and when you stir in their hearts, when you speak in that to them, Lord, Lord, I pray, Lord, that tell Lord, bow down upon their knees, wherever that they might be at. And Lord, that they'll ask you, Lord, to come into their heart and to save their soul today, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you just strengthen this little church, Lord. Lord, that you lift them up, Lord. Lord, that you go with them. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we love you. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for all my many blessings that you've given me. Giving you honor and glory for your sweet and holy name. And amen. You have a message.